Welcome to Weld.com. Got some people asking me, uh, do you ever weld with pure tungsten anymore? And the answer is yes. It's kind of rare. I've been welding for a long time, and I'll tell you what's changed over the years. It's been the refinement of some filler wires, some fluxes in stick welding electrodes. But what's really, really changed are the power sources. You know, back when I started, the old time uh, 300 amp machines weighed about 800 pounds, heavy coils and all that stuff. Let's take, a, let's take an old time Miller ABP 330 round top, gold star, it's what everybody called them. Great power source, stick, TIG, DC, AC. So you switch over to AC and you want to weld some aluminum, generally welding with pure tungsten. If you tried to weld it with 2% thoriated, you get what we call these thorium spikes. Your tungsten would just go away. We, there was no real way to cheat this sine wave. There wasn't any way to create a, an imbalance and you didn't have all the effects that we can do on these new machines. So uh, the question that I get a lot of is, well, how did you prepare your tungsten? How'd you get the ball on the end? Pure tungsten will, will ball itself, but there is a way that you can pre-shape and get the ball on there. So you know, basically what I've done over the years is get myself a piece of clean brass, clean copper works real good. Uh, the older machines, you could switch polarity. You don't want to do that under load, by the way. These newer machines, there's not a polarity switch, but I can switch the leads. So this uh, Everlast, I have switched the leads on it, so I have DCEP, DCEP. Electron flow is coming off of the grounded material onto the tungsten, and it's going to create a ball quickly. This happens within seconds. You get two. You get too weird with it and your ball gets real big. You don't want the ball very much bigger than the diameter of the tungsten itself. I'm not even gonna put my gloves on for this. I am gonna put my hood on. Okay, this didn't take very long at all. I really like doing this on copper better, but uh, same effect. This came out nice and shiny, it's clean on the end. And uh, you know, now we're ready to go on aluminum. I think we can do a real quick, uh, maybe a real quick demo shooting over the top of some aluminum, what this looks like. We'll set it up on 60 cycles per second, alternating current, uh, nothing fancy, no pulse, no nothing on the machine, just old school. Uh, old school AC TIG. Be right back. Okay, I went ahead and put my gloves on. I got talked into it because the camera guy likes me to be safe here. Again, we balled up a tungsten using DCEP, reverse polarity. It's still the same. And I did a little test weld over this and it's, it's the old school 60 Hertz, you know, what broad uh, arc and everything. Didn't, uh, <clears throat> didn't get enough amperage to reshape the ball and everything and it made the weld pull. So that's how we did it in the old times, and it's still, it's still cool to go back and do that. So, I, you know, I found that aluminum creates its own difficulties because of the physical properties of dissipating heat and the aluminum oxide layer and all that. Uh, to me, it's like it's either good or bad with aluminum, for me anyway. And I try to overcome all these things, and these inverters have really, really helped over the years. So uh, anyway, I hope this helps. Make sure you subscribe to the videos and thanks for watching. I'm Bob Moffat with Weld.com.